The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 7th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. More important than that, though, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. Let those figures do the walking. No, don't flip me the bird. That means send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put a radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to last show. Most of the U.S. indices trading to the upside. Dow's up 72, two tenths. The same with the S&P, which is about 10 points. The Nasdaq, the same, about three tenths or 35 points. Russell's up 12. Semi's up nine. It's the trendies that are the uh, little loser out here, down two tenths or 26 uh, bucks out there. You've got the spot volatilics that is trading lower. Gold's up nine bucks, silver 10 cents. Lights recruit is off 28 pennies. Natural gas is flat. 30 year treasury is up uh, one point, basically, at 137.19. Dollar-wise, leading the charge, the upside, you've got Mon God B, whatever that is. It's up uh, about 20 bucks. Mercado Libre is up 19. Arch Resources up 15. Shopify 13. And Murata Ther Marathi Therapeutics is up uh, 12 bucks. That's 30% to the downside. Booking Holdings, 32 bucks, a little over one and three tenths percent. The Equinix is off 18. Pool Corporation out about nine. American Towers off seven. And Cracker Barrel, how can Cracker Barrel be down? It's off six dollars and 41 cents. That's off six uh, percent out there. So let's begin with the uh, charts that really may uh, and, uh, that are the most important, I believe, from a time frame standpoint to watch and observe today. And that's really, you know, as I mentioned to you, I go through a multiple set of uh, time frame charts out here looking for to see if we can find some synergy, synergy in the waves that they're moving in. It's like being on the ocean and being a surfer out there. You know, you got just different cycles. And so today's cycle is brought to you courtesy of the 120 minute time frame chart. Let me show you what I mean out here. And this is for the equity futures, what we're talking about. So let me be very specific. What I mean here is if we take a look at three of the four form TD9 counts uh, earlier this morning, the key threshold level, this is for today, for tonight, is 4085.75. If you see a close below that, that's going to suggest lower price. Now, the ES mini, that's the upper left-hand corner, held the TD9 count bottom. And price found resistance very close to the top of that profile, 4140. So that's the key resistance level. If the ES mini closes above 4140, it will make a run to 4168.25. That's the TD9 count breakdown resistance area. The NQ actually closed just slightly at 8 o'clock, just slightly below its TD9 count. So really kind of negated the signal. Nonetheless, out there, because it was closed below 12,470, nonetheless, what we saw out here is we saw the NQ bounce up and find resistance at the uh, top of its profile, which is uh, the 120 minute time frame is what I'm referring to and that is uh, the price point of uh, 12640 we're trading at 1260 12650 or 12649 right now now here's the deal this bar does not close until 2 p.m. so it'll be what's the close look like as we are getting off the air if price is above the top of that profile that suggests a run up to 12810 don't know if price could take out 12810 but that's where price would be targeting inside the Dow equity future contract also for this time frame ATD nine count bottom 
That level held. Price now is trading above the resistance level that was established by the top of that profile. That's at 32.947. It's still possible that that could or would hold. We'd want to go take a look at the short-term time frame chart, see if we see any kind of signals out there. But here's the deal. If at 2 o'clock or when your favorite polar bear is coming on the air, price is trading above that 32.947 level, then the Dow is telling you it wants to make a move to 33.229. We did not get the same pattern, the TD9 count that is, on the Russell 2000. Uh, charts out here but this is where we've got the most synergy with regard to bottoms that have held and resistance levels that have held and that makes things kind of easy peasy if this market is really easy peasy which it's not but at least we have a good frame of reference with regard to what the equity futures are doing out there so now where do we go to next? Great question. Why don't we just switch over, just take a look at the daily time frame out here, uh, because uh, you know sometimes it's, a, it's good to get a, a little bit larger perspective on things. So we'll switch over to those charts as soon as I can find them. Here we go. Now what we've got are the four equity future contracts for the daily time frame. Well, what do we really see out here? We see over the last four, five, six uh, trading sessions, for the most part, nothing but a sideways move when you take a look at that ES mini chart. So no reason to think that that's going to be different. That doesn't mean that we can't rally into those levels that we uh, took a look at out there. So we most certainly can, especially if price is able to close above those resistance points. But really, if you look at the NQ, sideways move, Dow basically a sideways move. The Russell 2000 is really more sideways to higher out here. So the Russell 2000, it's the strongest of the four. What do you mean jelly bean? I mean, the Russell 2000 has already traded above yesterday's high. Now, it's also traded below yesterday's low, but this is the only one that has traded above yesterday's high out here. So it is the strong indice, and uh, maybe we should go take a look at the Russell 2000, see what it's communicating to you and I. So to do that, we'll go over to our multi time frame charts out here. Let's get the Russell 2000. Uh, we're going to be rolling over uh, contracts here shortly, but let's take a look at the uh, June contract, see what kind of other signals we might get from its intraday time periods. Now, it's going to take just a few moments to go ahead and uh, populate out there. The daily is what's going to be in the upper left, but we've really kind of taken a look at the daily. So just curious, what's the five-hour chart showing us here? What's the 60-minute uh, chart out here? So on the five-hour time frame chart, let's just expand this out. Price right now is taking on a TD9 count breakdown resistance level of 1897. It has triggered a road's momentum indicator signal, but it needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm that top. We don't have that. I can see an A to B equals CD. So if price is able to uh, stay above 1897.70, it would suggest move to 1933.20. That's courtesy of the five-hour time frame, the 300-minute chart. We've already covered the two-hour chart. 60-minute chart, what do we have out here to see what, what else we've got, any resistance area? Just getting back to some prior highs out here from back at about 6 o'clock in the morning on the 30th of May. Now, so if price can clear that level, that would be a strong message. So I don't really see, other than the 10-minute chart that did have a nice little TD9 count top, pulled price right back to support. That was the uh, top of its uh, daily profile. So the 10-minute chart is very strong as is the five minute chart out here so what the russell 2000 is communicating to you and i is there's some resistance up ahead out here but we're not seeing any kind of a topping signal to suggest that price can't try to plow through that level let's switch here from the russell 2000 and head over and take a look at the nq well we're not going to have enough time because we're going to a hard break but uh, we'll take a look at that unless we get some calls or some other requests out there of course i want to take a look at what you want to look at nancy wants to look at apple so we'll get that set up, and I see we've got a question here from Eric, from Dennis, and from Michael. So thank you guys for sending in those emails. We'll certainly get to those questions. Steve Roach with TFN. We'll be right back. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in the Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 115. S&P's up uh, 14. You know, a lot of movies out there, they've got these uh, um, uh, great uh, scenes or, or great, uh, uh, what's, what's, what's the... Uh, um, what is I'm looking for? Uh, uh, phrases, if you will. Like, uh, for example, I feel the need for speed. Most people out there that uh, have seen the movie Top Gun would easily be able to say, yeah, that's from Top Gun out there. There's a great Christmas movie uh, that features Cameron Diaz, uh, Kate Winslet, and uh, Jude Law out there, right, the holiday. And uh, Kate Winslet, there's a, 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 it just sticks in my mind, or what happened when she says, I'm looking for corny. Well, how did I segue into that? Because we've got uh, John on the line from Philly, and I believe we're going to take a look at corn. Now, not saying, John, that you're corny. I'm just saying we're going to look at corn out there. So thanks for calling. How are you doing this afternoon? Well, Steve, I am just uh, flummoxed here. I have never heard anybody mention my name in the same breath as Kate Winslet. Ah, <laughs> so okay, perfect. Uh, I, perfect. I, I don't know what that means, but that's that's pretty cool. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's good company. You keep good company. That's a, We'll leave it like that. So... <laughs> So I believe you want to take a look at December corn. A few things you want to take a look at, I think. So December corn is is uh, one of them. Is that correct? Yes, Steve. Uh, thanks very much. Yes, I'd like to ask you about these corn, November beans, and July Kansas City wheat. Reason okay. being is this, Steve. Uh, uh, up until last Thursday, I was flat all three. Okay. And I had booked gains on each of those in, in prior weeks when we were up near highs. Um. I rebought wheat last Friday. I rebought corn yesterday morning on a dip. Mm, okay. And I just and I bought the no, uh, November beans uh, a couple hours ago. Okay. And you can see on the uh, the corn and the wheat have pulled back. The wheat is is probing. Excuse me. The soybeans are probing highs. Uh, in that latter, I see the potential for um, a weather-driven uh, building cause jump the creek rally ahead. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know, uh, we've come into the uh, the heart of growing season now. 
and planting is just about done. Um, the Kansas City wheat, uh, the Southern Plains wheat crop, is made. It was destroyed uh, in the past couple of months by drought. So that, that much is uh, already known. Uh, what the corn and soybean crops will be, you know, come harvest time, now we're totally weather dependent. And then we've got that added uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine uncertainty issue. over Ukraine supplies. But yes. these corn, November beef, wheat, I'd like to ask work. Tell me where you see resistance as these things start to rally, if they do. Sure. So it's it's pretty easy with regard to December corn. The first resistance level, in essence, is where it hit today's high, which is the green oscillator and change line. So for, first of all, let's come back to take a look at December corn, which formed a nice TD nine count bottom on June the first, and it did that on the bar following bar number uh, bar number nine out there. And I believe it might have been the next day you said uh, might have been June second that you took a long position there. So very much supported by that TD nine count. Now you have a new profile that has formed out here for corn and the uh, bottom of that profile is at 68708 so that's your support area the first resistance level this is a bullish structure profile so typically when you get above the center of that profile and i mean a close above it and that's at 70738 you get a run up to the top of that profile box and that's at 727 john you've got a resistance level which is that green oscillator and change line and that's at 72065 right now if price can close above let's say 721 out there that's going to be a very bullish signal but then you've got one last battle at least on the daily time frame and that's at that 727 we'll call it 728 if price can clear that then what price should do is run to its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. And that's up at the 760.50 level. That's the daily time frame chart. I, I know that you're in the Tiger's Den, so you can see this chart. Do you have any questions about what I've shared with you so far? It, it, the, uh, that's all we need. The daily chart alone suffices. Got the parameters. Check on corn. Let's go on to beans and uh, Kansas City wheat. Okay, so we got ZS, we've got the uh, November contract out here. So this is going to take just a few moments here to uh, populate. Uh, I'm going to just, while we're on the phone and this is populating, I'm just or on, on the line here, I'm going to look at my black background charts out here and just see if there's anything that uh, pops out to me uh, for November. So nothing yet. What I see on my other charts is that price is trading above uh, profiles, daily profile levels out there. Uh, here you're going to see that uh, shortly. Price is above its green oscillator and change line. So we're going to open up this chart here. This is November beans. I don't believe we're going to see a resistance level out. Well, so resistance would be, there's really two, let me let's see here. So resistance, the interesting thing, John, is that all the way back, and you'll love this, this is courtesy of uh, Saratoga Bob and, of course, uh, his finding uh, in the use of wave number seven uh, from the Chapman Way. But back on February 24, 2022, that was wave number seven. And it also turned out to be a shooting star and a bear sash candle. So that is your resistance level. You already knew that, though. I know you knew that. And that's up at the 1555 level. So price should target that. That's the level of resistance. There's also a little bit of resistance on the evening star candle formation that formed. Uh, it was really a three bar candle formation culminated on May 31st. That resistance level 156050. So those are your resistance levels out there. Um, I see an A to B equals CD to the upside out here. The A to B equals CD starting on May the 1st now, or April the 1st out there. I'm off the, uh, I, I have an A to B equals CD tool on my other set of charts out here. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply put that into the system and see what kind of price projection. So I get a one-to-one -one price projection up at the 1579 area. Uh, that does not mean that's where price is going to uh, stop. But if, again, if price can clear the 1555, then you've got 1579.50. And because the retracement level, this uh, B to C retracement level out here was less than a point, uh, less than a point six one eight retracement area. Is that the one that I'm using? No. Hold on a minute here. I've got it. My apology. There's a different. There's 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 several A to B equals C D patterns out here. So let me go to a little bit larger one. I think it's Steve, going to give us... Uh, as you're yeah. punching that up on your chart work, and I'm watching right in the Tiger's Den on Discord, so I'm seeing everything you do, but just let me alert you and your yeah. listeners to why I'm asking this now. 
Sure. Um, other than the Southern Plains drought that has been in existence for the past 90 days. So that's old news, destroyed that crop. Uh, but now, uh, as we're coming into the heart of growing season in the uh, the Corn Belt, the West and the East, uh, uh, planting was a bit on the slow side, but it's caught up. And conditions right now are A-OK compared to average. The first shot of real heat is forecast uh, to come starting next week. And uh, so I am just being very prepared with facts and figures in the event that uh, hot weather turns into truly adverse weather Mm -hmm, and prompts mm -hmm. buyers to take control and price to go crazy. I'm not forecasting that, but I do want to be prepared should that occur, hence my reason for asking you about this now. Perfect, perfect. We're going to come back with John in Philly. We're going to take a look at soybeans and anything else that he'd like. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with the free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got John and Philly on the line. We're talking soybeans out here. Now, I put them, and we're talking A to B equals CD patterns as well, to the upside. So I put the monthly, the continuous contract on my uh, chart out here, John. And uh, I don't know what the all-time high is. I think it's like 18 bucks or so. But it looks like we're headed to a new all-time high in the 20 $21 a bushel or so. And here's how I come up with that. First, we'll take a look at uh, soybeans. Soybeans here on a monthly basis, 
formed a oh, sorry about that. They formed a TD nine count top, and they did that um, the month of uh, April of 2021, and that led to a pullback and a retracement to its bullish structured monthly profile. That's a level of support, and that held, and it's since taken off from there. We've gotten above that swing point. That sets up a longer term A to B equals C D to the upside, and that gives us this uh, about this uh, 20. 50 a bushel or so price projection that's on the bigger picture if we take a look at the daily time frame as i mentioned there there's a couple different a there's there's so many a to b equal cd patterns here that we could select i've chosen two of the conservative ones we identified the resistance level which was the high from february 24th as well as the high from uh, may 31st so if those highs are cleared 15 uh, 1560 or so that's going to suggest a move to 1579 or 1604 john either of these charts here do you have any questions of do I need to put the monthly back up? Uh, tell me what you need. Very complete. I thank you. Uh, I'm going to sign off. If you could just put up the July Kansas City wheat futures daily chart, that would be helpful. I'll take a glimpse at that as I sign off. And just one last comment for you to you and your listeners, and frankly, most importantly to myself we've had a massive bull market in grains. Uh, and speculators uh, are, you know, heavily long. Uh, if anything happens, like particularly good summer growing weather or some sort of temporary or permanent resolution over there in the Black Sea, think Ukraine and Russia, mm -hmm. if any of those or others that I, other factors I can't think of, uh, dramatic, very, uh, very quick. 20 to 30 percent price declines are not impossible. So this mm -hmm. is a situation of danger any which way we cut it. So uh, so thanks for all those details. I appreciate it. But that uh, July Kansas City wheat daily chart would be helpful. Thanks, sir. You you, you got it. Thanks so much for the call. That was John in uh, Philly. And uh, so with regard to, first with regard to, I'm going to uh, do a couple of different things out here. Here is the July contract that John did go long on. Now, what we see here is, is and this is a perfect example of, of the tools that I use to help us identify tops and bottoms. Now, that does not mean that, that these patterns are present at every top and a bottom. It just means when they are present, boy, they alert us. And so if we take a look at the uh, July contract, this top with a TD9 count and Rhodes Mintum indicator top. That then took pressure all the way back to its breakout level. Now, the breakout area is at 1123.25. I can guarantee you, John in the Tiger's Den, any of the uh, TFNN contributors, myself included, would never have picked out 1123.25 as the breakout level. And that's the beauty of the TD9 count pattern. It gives us multiple tools to assess what the market is communicating to us. This formed a TD9 count bottom. It does it on bar number eight. Now, what price should do is make its way to its oscillator and change line. That's at 12, 10, 15. However, there's a brand new profile that formed today. So, John, if you're asking where are the sellers residing, right now they reside at 1195.60. If price can clear that, you've got another potential group of sellers at about 1210. That's that oscillator and change line. If you can clear that, or not you, but you know, price, you know, I'm, I'm discussing that here, then you should get a move up to 13 bucks, even Steven. That's the TD9 count breakdown level. Just like the TD9 count breakout level was support. The breakdown level can also be resistance out there at 13 bucks. So I think that covers what John needs out here. I don't really think we need to go into the black background chart. So, again, appreciate the call, and um, um, and uh, thanks for that. So let's go to our next question. This one came in from Nancy. Nancy wanted to take a look at Apple. So we're going to switch over to our other screen out here momentarily and take a look at Apple and go through what it's communicating to us with our multi time frame set of charts. Monthly time frame, TD9 count top, put, put, took price back to support. Bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile, 140.48. The move lower may be over. I wish we could uh, say, well, and we got an A to B. We got a Gartley buy pattern, it looks like, on the weekly chart. Let me just confirm this here, confirm it this way. So we'll draw the A to B uh, line out here, and then I'm just going to simply uh, take this and add this to the seated. Well, I, I don't even have to do that. I can already see that, that we have a confirmed Gartley buy 
Gartley buy pattern out here. So Apple's giving us a Gartley buy, and that makes a whole lot of sense because we got the same thing out of the NQ out there with regard to a Gartley buy pattern. Now, because we have that bottom, what price should do in Apple, Nancy, again, we're looking at a weekly chart, is mosey on up to that oscillator and change line that's currently printing at the 157.29-ish area. That's the weekly chart. The daily time frame chart out here inside of Apple, it's got an A to B equals CD to the downside as well. Price right now is just dealing with its... Um, with its TAS market profiles. The resistance level, which is taken on right now, is at the 148.05. Now, I would have thought, and I did think, uh, because uh, price closed above the uh, top of its daily profile May 27th and then the following three trading sessions that we had a real breakup. But back on, uh, I think it was made up in Friday, June 3rd, out there, yeah, June 3rd, we had price dip back below. But if we get back out of it, it was just normal retracement that might be setting up, quite frankly, an A to B equals C to the upside. The reason I say May is because we have to get past the B point, and that's actually labeled here as B, part of the Chapman Wave Tools. If price is able to take out that high, 151.74, then you'd have an A to B equals CD pattern. No reason for me to draw that in right now because we, we don't have that as we speak. As far as volumes are concerned, I'm going to go off of the screen here that you're looking at. Let me type in Apple because price is trading into that swing point or into a swing point. I just want to see what kind of volume. And the swing point I'm referring to inside of Apple is from the trading session of June 1st. 74 million shares. So you're trading into it already with 41 million shares. It's a four hours into the trading session. So it's going to be a close call. But it is pushing. Apple is pushing what seems like mathematically pretty similar volume. Not light volume. We're not substantially lighter volume. Of course, I don't know what the next two hours will hold for Apple. Let's see if there's anything else out here that we can share with Nancy that's worthwhile as we look at the intraday time period charts out here. And there's just nothing that's really sticking out at me. So I'd say that today's battle for you is the top of that daily profile, and that's at the 148.05. If you clear that, the signal is that Apple should continue to move higher. So I hope that helps you out, Nancy. Thanks so much for the request. Let's go to a couple of requests that have come in by email. First one coming in from Eric, and Eric is uh, from Naples. Hey, Eric, uh, nice to... Uh, uh, nice to uh, hear from you, Naples. What a uh, what a great bay. what a great city. First of all, I love Naples. I'm over there quite often, and I love the gas prices compared to what I pay over here. But your question is, can we take a look at UGA? UGA, we most certainly can. What I need to figure out is what is you. I don't really need to figure it out. It doesn't really matter once the charts pop up on the screen. We're agnostic to it. But this is the U.S. gasoline fund out here trading right now at the 7620 area. And uh, gosh darn it, I hate this new Apple. <clears throat> man, oh man. The, with the way that, uh, you know, some update and just simply the way that uh, this uh, works with the emails that are open, it used to be so easy for me to take your guys' emails and, and in any event. Uh, now here we take a look at the UGA. So what is it doing? When we take a look at a monthly time frame chart, we've got no topping signal. You're at bar number seven, suggest to move higher. And I will tell you, I looked at gasoline futures this morning, the seasonal pattern. I can't put that up here. But what I can share with you is that it suggested that we continue to move higher. The weekly chart says the same thing. Now, the TD9 count pattern on the daily time frame says, hey, hold your horses out here. There could be a little bit of a retrieve. Reprieve. We'll take a look at that when we get back from this break. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. 
With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we take a look at the U.S. gas fund out here in the daily time frame. We see a confirmed TD9 count top that was confirmed yesterday. Price has gapped to the downside and is trading below its oscillator and change line. Now, that oscillator and change line is green. And a close below 76.56 today suggests a further retracement. We'll take a look at further retracement to where. On the daily time frame chart, there's no support until you get down to 68.51. So that would be a pretty decent move. And then the breakout support is at the 6677 area out there. Now, I'm not saying that price is going to go there just yet. How are we going to know if price is headed there? Well, that's pretty easy. And the reason I say that's pretty easy is because we've got a nice little TD9 count bottom on the 30-minute time frame chart that formed above breakout support or a breakout support level of 75.19. So here's the deal, uh, Eric, and that is if you see a close below 75.19, that's a signal that we had lower, probably an A to B equals CD to the downside on the 30-minute time frame chart. But you've got a valid bottom. Price is consolidated with inside the 30-minute profile. It should make a run for the 77.01 area. And if price can close above that, then you're looking at 79.23. So right now you do have a bit of a uh, – you do have a top that's in place for sure. And I'd watch the 30-minute time frame chart for future signals. I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time. Time to write in. Dennis G writes in, and Dennis wants to take a look at uh, ESTE. I see you've got a second instrument request out here. We'll see what we can do to get to that as well. ESTE. I don't know if that's Estee Lauder. I doubt that it is, but nope, it's Earthstone Energy. So Earthstone Energy is uh, trading out at 2188. It's trading above the top of its daily, weekly, monthly profile. The question is, what's your long-term outlook for ESTE? So for that, actually, you're asking for a long-term outlook. Uh, we're just going to focus in on, I suppose, the monthly time. Well, I, as I here, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to give you the monthly, weekly, and daily. Monthly, you're in bar number eight of a TD9 count. So we know that a, uh, a top can form on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine out there. So how do we know if this is going to be a top right now? Well, we look to the weekly chart to look for some type of signal. Well, the weekly chart then shows us what? Shows us there we are in wave number seven, letter G. Now, that requires a lower high to confirm that pattern. So you couldn't get a confirmation of that signal until next week out there. But that's a possibility of a top to go ahead and match the monthly. And now the daily is in bar number eight of a TD9 count. Now, bar number nine still has to complete out. Out here bar number nine just simply needs a close tomorrow with a close above uh, 1960 likely to happen so you may get a td9 count dennis on the daily time frame chart that then should take price back to its oscillator and change line that would be natural that's down at the 1934 level 
Um, longer, so it looks like we got a short-term top. Uh, the way that the monthly, weekly, and daily are tying into each other out there, but it is energy out here, and so there is that fundamental idiocy of what we're doing here in the uh, U.S., and that could just simply keep things uh, jacked up to the upside out there. You asked about EE. I'm going to do this off screen out here just for a moment. Uh, that is Accelerate Energy. Okay, so its charts are different, and this has not been trading for as long. So I'll just switch over and just share with you what this is looking like uh, out here. And right now, price is just consolidating with inside of its daily profile. So your support level is down at 26.43, and your resistance level is up at 29.57 out there. You can see here, not enough data in the weekly and the monthly to uh, do the same type of analysis that we did on EST. So we won't because we can't, and I'll just leave it there. So, Dennis, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Let's go to our next question that's coming in from Michael P. And this is Mike in uh, Pennington. And Mike wants to take a look at uh, VLO, Valero, out there. And so let's get that up on the screen. Let's actually put this on our black background screens for a moment. And his question is, I'm in Valero. Where do you see this going to? So you're above all profile levels out here, daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, you got A to B equals CD patterns that would require some type of uh, uh, bearish reversal candle to confirm some type of short-term top out there. I'm letting the other charts here load. I think I might have too many days requesting on uh, somewhere. That's why it's taking a little bit longer. We're going to go ahead and switch screens right now and then further answer the question for Michael. What is it that our charts see? So bar number seven. I'm on a monthly basis so don't have a threat of a monthly top as we speak and in fact suggests that we had higher if we look at the uh, weekly chart this negated a td9 count top and it did this uh, week of may 27th so this is strong like bold suggests it wants to move higher it is the daily michael that you want to particularly pay attention to and that is because today is going to be bar number nine of a td9 count now you can get a higher high tomorrow and that would then complete the pattern so just watch over the next couple of days. Now, retracement, should we get a retracement, would take us back or should take us back to the oscillator and change line. That's currently printing at uh, 137.31 out there. So uh, all things look good, but you may be preparing for some type of short-term retracement out there. You said you are short ARKK. So let me see if I can... I'll just get that up here, A-R-K-K, -K, and uh, we'll wait for this to uh, populate, A-R-K-K. -K. I'm going to get that on my, uh, that's one of Kathy Wood's ETFs. So the question is this, I'm short A-R-K-K, -K, was in the green this morning, just went to red again. How does A-R-K-K -K look? So uh, I'm going to switch back to my black background screen, show you what first pops up, which is that price is trading between trend line support and trend line resistance out here. And I'm looking at the daily time frame chart. So in the daily time frame, you can now see that. Um, and uh, in the trend line, both of those have held. So you're really in the get smart cone of silence. No idea which way this is going to break. You do have resistance at 45.67, so you're short. If you see a close above 45.67, then you want to prepare for price moving to 49.40. I would say it would be a close above 49.40 that would have you scared because that is the top of its bearish structured weekly profile. Now, I don't mean scared. I mean scared from the standpoint that uh, being short is not the right conclusion. I'm not saying that is the case right now. But as we switch over and take a look at our other charts out here for ARKK, you're going to see on the monthly time frame you have a beautiful td9 count bottom that it formed at td9 count breakout support 3941 if you look at the weekly time frame what you have is roads momentum indicator signal but we don't have the bullish reversal candle just yet and if i look at the daily time frame out here so if you did get a bullish reversal candle on a weekly basis then you'd have a second confirmed bottom you have the monthly then the weekly we don't you know there's probably an a to b equals cd to the downside on the daily let me just expand this out take a quick peek yeah, I'm sure there is. I would watch the top of that daily profile, 45.67. That'll give you your, your next clue, you know, if you're on the wrong side of that trade out there. To the downside, you've got support at uh, 40.38 and then at 36.86 out there. You're looking for price to crack below that 36.86 level. So, Mike, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in and have a, a terrific uh, Tuesday out there. So I think that's so oh, Hector has written in and he wants to take a look at Exxon Mobil. So uh, that's uh, let's get that up on our screen here. Make sure mind the white. Yeah, on the white screens out there. We'll let that populate. Hector's question reads like this. Hey, Steve, a happy tequila taco Tuesday. 
not getting anywhere near tequila on a Tuesday. Maybe a thirsty Thursday, but not on a, a terrific Tuesday out there. But the question goes like this. XOM, nothing can go up forever. How many hows, however, my A to B equals C, A to B equals CD up on a weekly basis has a target of 159.73. And uh, I've got, so here's the weekly chart. Here's the weekly A to B equals CD. So I think we've got two different, well, we did. I think we've got two different A to B equals CDs. So let me draw mine in while we go to break out here. So the one that I would draw in looks like uh, this. The A point that I'm going to use is down here at the uh, low from October 26th. The B point is going to be the high from the week of June 21st. The C point is the low on August 16th. 1 to 1.618 is going to take us to 106.81. And I don't see anything getting in the way of that. But we'll take a look at that when we come back to this week. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at, sorry, I'm multitasking out here, and I'm not doing a very good job of it. Uh, to tell you the truth, but uh, TSLA, trying to get to everything. So here's the ExxonMobil chart uh, for uh, for Hector. And this is the A to B equals CD pattern that Hector drew in here to get to the 159.74 159 level, the 1.618. But Hector, that is not an, that's not the correct A to B equals CD pattern to draw in. So let me try to do this here relatively quickly. We're going to start with the same A point out here. And that A point is from the trading session 
of uh, May, uh, March 23rd out here. This is the uh, weekly chart that we're looking at. Now, when I'm looking for a B point, one of the things I'm looking for is I'm looking at the, I'm also looking at the lows, not just the high, but where is there a low that also formed that hasn't been taken out? So for example, um, if I chose my B point out here as the high from March the 8th, then I'd have to find the next low, and that might be the trading session from February 19th. But I can see that there's a lower low after that, so I can't really use that as my A to B equals CD. But knowing that this is the low right here, I know where my C point is at, and it's also near the bottom of a profile. So that says I've got my B point is going to be the high of this uh, move, and that's going to be, it looks like, June 21st high. Then my C point is going to be out here on August 16th. Now, here we get pretty close to 0.382 retracement. What you chose got us a 17% retracement. And that's just not realistic with regard to the way that, I mean, it can happen that way, but you're really looking for at least uh, close to a 0 0.382 retracement for that B to C leg out there. So here is the A to B equals CD pattern. It is still very strong. Your next price projection level is the 108.43 area out there. But I do believe in the case of Exxon Mobil, let me switch over and take a look at it. Today is going to become bar number eight. So you could get a short-term topping pattern in Exxon Mobil between today and Tuesday and Thursday of this week. It's not a guarantee at this stage here, but we could get a short-term top out there. So Hector and everybody else, I hope that helps you out. I know there were a couple requests that came in through the Tiger's Den. I'll, I'll look through those, see if I can respond back to you individually uh, with regard to an answer to your question. So folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien will take us on home. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks.